How many machines did you say your company has produced? Nine, sir. Three in production in Boston proper, and five throughout New England. How many machines did you have in working order before you set foot at the Columbia Paper Bag Factory? Before arriving at the Columbia Paper Bag Factory, we had three machines at full capacity. And was it that day that you encountered Miss Knight for the first time? Yes, I had never met Miss Knight before that day. It was a memorable occasion. She nearly wrecked my machine and then called me a thief. Excuse me, sir. The foreman sent me to help with anything you needed. He's running a little behind. His son became ill this morning. Well, ma'am, if you don't mind, I would like a cup of tea. Oh, no, I met with the machine. I work at Columbia. I'm one of the sewers. <laughs> nice to meet you, I suppose. If you adjust the lever, it will run more smoothly. Miss. It is miss, isn't it? Yes, sir. Mm. I have this under control. Of course. Carry away. You really should consider adjusting the lever. It's the best way to make the machine work. sure to put in a word with the foreman. He'll be pleased with your dedication to the new machinery. Oh, he knows, Mr. Annan. He's seen the blueprints for this machine before. <laughs> I haven't sent them in yet. I want to apologize for the little ruse we've put upon you. You see, his son's not sick. He knows who you are and wanted to give me the chance to confront you. The man who stole my design. Where did you get these? I drew them two years ago. This is my machine. I, I don't know what kind of childish games you're trying to play here, but this is my machine. This is the first time it's ever been in Springfield. It was born in Springfield, sir. I find that very hard to believe, and so will everyone else. I will be filing suit. I expect you may be surprised what people will understand. Poor factory worker. It was too old and unattractive to get married. No one's ever going to believe that you invented a machine as sophisticated as this. People know it when they grab when they see one. No further questions, Your Honor. You may cross examine the defendant. Why would a factory worker have a claim to your device? He is poor and in need of money. Why else are we here? And why else are you here? You're part of the sham as well. I'm here for justice, sir. You don't really believe her, do you? These drawings are impressive. But how do I know it's not just a clever forgery? Because I know how the machine works. Well, that may be the case, but Charles Annan has already filed the patent. It's your word against his. You mean a woman's word against a man's. Have you ever been formally educated? I grew up in a cotton mill. My family could not afford to send me to school. I have to explain how you are capable of making these drawings. The fact that you've been sewing bags will not make your case. My first invention was when I was 12. I was working at the mill when a shuttlecock flew loose and impaled a man. He died right in front of me and my sister. You see the fold here? They added that to the shuttle. It was quite simple. What happened next? The factory manager took it. He said it would save lives and 
It did. He told me then I was smart enough to go to school, but instead I went to work the next morning. What drives a woman like you to just risk everything like this? What drives anyone? Well, most people would say money. When I created the cover for the shuttle, the factory ran more smoothly. But most importantly, lives were saved. Even if you win. And I can't promise that. This is what it will cost you. I can do that, sir. And what if you don't win? Then I'll go back to working at the factory and paying rent as a boarder. Margaret, I have no doubt you designed the machine. But Mr. Annan has already built it. Even if I can prove you designed it, the judge might not care. Mr. Butterfield, there is no machine without the person who invented it. Hundreds of men can build a machine, perhaps even thousands. But without the design, and without the designer, there is no machine. I understand your position. But a judge has to understand it. If he does not, you may never be anything more than a factory worker. Do you, her own lawyer, believe her? Mr. Annan, the court has been presented with evidence that Margaret Knight had been working on the design for the paper bag bottom machine for the last two years. So the question is not whether we should believe her, it's whether or not we should believe you. I filed a patent with my designs. I built the machines and I put them in factories around New England. Have you been to the machine shop on Adams Street? Yes, of course. I've been to the shop on Adams Street. It's the nature of my profession, sir. Yes, of course. And does this shop hold any particular significance to you? A shop is a shop. Once you've seen one, you've seen them all. You see, Mr. Annan, my client has only been to one machine shop, sir. Just one. And that is the shop on Adams Street. So how is it then that you both have the exact same plans for the exact same device? Yes. I may have placed one of the models for my machine in the shop on Adams Street, and that is how she must have gotten her hands on it. You just said you might have. Surely a man, the great inventor of the paper bag bottom machine, would know exactly where he left the model for his device. Do you have any explanation? The poor factory worker dreams of having a better life. She's tired of cutting and pasting, so she toils with paper and pen. She saves up all of her pocket change and makes the big trip to Boston. She stops at the first shop that she finds, and lo and behold, she sees the machine that she believes will change her life. No further question, John. I would like to call Margaret Knight to the stand. Miss Knight, Miss Tannen believes you simply showed up to the shop with your blueprints. I did not. And why not? I did not need them. Would you please explain to the court what this sheet of paper is? That is the receipt from the machine shop on Adams Street with a signature from the manager showing I dropped off a model for casting. Interesting. So if you only dropped off the model, why did you not need the blueprints? Because if your model is well constructed, you do not need the blueprints to build a new one. You mean a model like this one? Precisely. 
This is the same model that you dropped off at the shop of Adams Street. Yes. The same shop that Mr. Annan does not remember whether or not he visited. Yes. So if you only dropped off the model at the machine shop on Adams Street, how did Charles Annan get the blueprints to register for the patent? Mr. Annan would have had to reverse engineer the model to get his plans, which he most certainly did. It's why the levers were troubling him so much when we had our meeting at the Columbia Paper Bag Factory. Trouble he most certainly had. No further questions, Your Honor. It is my ruling that Margaret Knight did in fact create the designs for the paper bag bottom machine. Given that Ms. Knight is a woman and a factory worker, she was unfamiliar with the patent process. Her filing was untimely, but the court won't hold that against her. Do you now understand the rules of the court and know how to proceed in the correct manner going forward? Yes, sir, I do. Thank you, sir. Mr. Annan, the court has decided to overturn your patent for the paper bag bottom machine. You will no longer receive royalties from Miss Knight's work. Court is adjourned. Your own factory. Well, it's not much now, but it will be up and running in nine months. Impressive. Thank you. Oh, I, I have something for you. The last one. I must confess, I was worried I'd left you worse off than when you started. This case could have taken everything. Huh. Did you even have a plan in case you did not win? No. No, I did not. You see, Mr. Butterfield, as a child, I never cared for the things that girls usually do. The only thing I wanted was my jackknife, my gimlet, and some pieces of wood. I was always sought after for my tools. I would make things for my brothers. They came to me for their kites. They would always boast, Maddie will make them for us. <laughs> so what you're saying is you're not done yet? Not by a long shot.